This one, we have the line y equals 12x as a straight line with the slope 12. y equals 12, that's a horizontal line. And x equals zero is the y-axis. Put them all together. But this, these two meet when x equals one. If x equals one, y equals 12. Since these three graphs like, are not too bad to compute or to identify the intersection point, okay? Y equals 12. <clears throat> y equals 12, and this is y equals 12x, and this is x equals zero. And the region bounded by these three graphs. We do the rotation about the y-axis. As the original instruction. So this is the axis of revolution. So when you do the rotation, you, it goes, it's go around the y-axis. So I'm gonna perform one, one partition. And since the axis of revolution is the vertical line here, we make a partition parallel to the axis of revolution and rotate about it. So it form one cylindrical shell, okay? Because the original one, if you do the entire graph, is gonna be like the cone pointing down. Okay, so we consider one shell. So for one shell, we're gonna identify the thickness, the position, the interval of integration, the height and the radius. From what we identify here, the position is the x position, but based on one bar, right? Okay, it's on the x. And then x from zero to one, because when you move the bar here to the left to the right of the region, the left end part is at zero, the right end part is at x equals one we got the interval of integration. And then the thickness is gonna be the change in X. So the thickness or the width of the bar is delta X or the DX. So everything will remain as the X is a function in X. Next part, we're gonna find the radius. The radius is measured from the axis of revolution to the bar. So this is the radius. So the radius equals the right part of the, the line, the blue line there or the radius is right at the bar and the bar is the X position and then subtracted by the zero, which is the axis of revolution. So the radius is X for our case. And then the height of the bar so the height, that is the difference of the top graph and the bottom graph. The top graph is 12, the bottom graph is 12x. Okay, top minus bottom. We get everything. Next, we just set up the integration based on the volume by shell or the circumference times the thickness. And the circumference is two times pi times radius times the height and then uh, times the thickness. So the volume equals the integration two times pi, the radius is x, the height is quantity 12 minus 12x, 12 the thickness is dx, okay? That's the radius and that's the height and that's the thickness. Integration from zero to one, cleaning up, or simplify as much as we can, two pi out of the way, integral, multiply x into the parentheses. We have 12x minus 12x to the second. With respect to x, 
from zero to one. Well, we see something in common. We see 12. You can leave 12 in there or factor 12 out. It doesn't matter. If we leave it out, it is it's convenient another way because when you find the antiderivative of x, we have x squared over 2. 2 and 12 can be simplified. So it becomes 6x squared and minus 12x to the second becomes 12x to the third over 3. 3 and 12 reduce to be 4. 4x four to the third. Evaluate from x equals zero to x equals one. Next, the routine like replaced by the upper limit, subtracted by the lower limit, which is zero minus zero. Is it multiply? Okay, and the answer will be four pi. Okay, 